Hello guys, this is Deepika from mytutorialrack.com. In the previous example, we did some hands-on with the triggers and there was an issue with that example. What was happening was every time the status of the customer record is active, no matter the previous status was active or was something else, every time you save that existing record without even making any changes, it was creating a new invoice record. We don't want to do that. We wanted to make sure that it creates an invoice record whenever the customer status changes to active from a non-active status. It means if there was the previous status of the customer was pending and you changed it to active, in that case, I would like to create an invoice record, but not in the other scenario where the previous status was active and the new status is also active. No, I don't want to create an invoice record just for that. I want to make sure that invoice records gets created only in the case where the previous status of the customer changes from non-active to active status. So let's take a take let's take a look at a business requirement. Suppose we received a business requirement where we need to create an invoice record when the customer status field changes from the non-active status to the active status. So for this example also I will create a trigger on this Apex customer object. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go back here and go to the customers so let me show you what what is the problem with this uh, if you go to the test 10 let's say and uh, the status right now is empty here and there is only one invoice so let's go ahead and change the status to active so this is fine because in this case i would like to create the invoice record because the status is changed from a non-active status to active status so if you hit the save button the trigger will get fired, the existing trigger, and it will create a second invoice, which is this invoice number 27. But the thing is, if I go ahead and edit this record and just click on the save button, the trigger will get fired again because for trigger, it's it considered it as an update operation and it will fire the trigger and it will find out that, okay, the customer status is active because in the previous trigger, we are not checking the previous status of the trigger of the customer record. We are only looking at the current status. And since it is active, what will it do is it will go ahead and create a new invoice record. So every time you just save, uh, keep up saving the same record again and again, it will, without even making any changes, it will go ahead and create a next invoice for you. But we don't want to do that. We only wanted the situation or we only wanted the scenario where the customer status was non-active and we changed it to active. In those situations only, I would like to create a new invoice record. So first we're going to do is we're going to go back to the setup and delete the existing trigger that we have. So we're going to go back to this customer trigger and we are going to go ahead and delete this because we are going to go ahead and create a better version of the trigger. So how I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and type in objects. And for this example, we are going to go ahead and use another context variable called trigger.oldmap. We've already learned about the trigger.oldmap, but if you forgot, I just want to give you a quick recap of it. It's a map which will store the key as the record ID and the value as the old record values. So it will have the information of the old records as well as it is a map. So it will have the ID as the key and the value would be the old record values. So we're going to go ahead and use the trigger dot of old map. So we will need this to see what was the previous status of the customer record and what is the new status of the customer record. If the previous status was non-active and if the new status is active, in that case only I will go ahead and create an invoice record. So go to the setup, click on the objects here, click on the build create objects, go ahead and click here and then go ahead and click on the customer object here. And now if you scroll down on this page, you will see that there is no trigger because we deleted it. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new trigger for the customer record. And let's say the name of the trigger is customer after update trigger. So let's say this is the name of the trigger and what is the object? It is on the customer object and what is the event? The event is after update because every time a record gets updated, a customer record gets updated, I want the trigger to get fired. So this event is going to be after update. So most of the things going to be same for just for the previous example. So we're going to go ahead and create an invoice record, the list of invoices which we wanted to go ahead and insert. So list, we're going to go ahead and create the list of the invoice records and uh, the name of the list is let's say invoice list is equals to new of the so this is an empty list right now 
because we have not added any invoice record. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and loop through all the records which are updated in this particular context. So whichever records, whichever the customer records got updated, we're going to go ahead and loop through each of those customer records. So we're going to go ahead and loop through the customer records here. So we're going to go ahead and say trigger dot of new. So whichever records got updated, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Now, the condition is the main thing here. We are going to check for two things. If the previous, if the current status, or we can say the new status is active, and we will also make sure the previous status is non-active. This is what we're going to make sure. If the previous status is active, and if the previous status is non-active, and the current status is active. So how we're going to check? We're going to go ahead and check the status field of the customer if the object customer dot of the status field. So we can always fetch the API field name. So we're going to go ahead and fetch the status API field name and check if the status is equals to active. And another thing we need to make sure there is an and clause here it means both the conditions should be true. So trigger, we're going to go ahead and use this old map context variable, trigger.oldmap, and we will go ahead and fetch the customer ID. And we'll look for the status of that particular, the previous status of the customer. And if the previous status, so we're going to go ahead and check the, go back here, if the previous status is not equals to active. So we can go ahead and see if the previous status is not equals to active. Then what I'm going to do here in this case, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create an invoice record. So if the previous status is not active and the current status is active, that means there is an update happened from a non-active status to the active status. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an invoice record. So let's say the name of the invoice is OBJ invoice. We're going to go ahead and create the invoice record here. And First thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and set the status of this in record. So let's say the status of the invoice is, let's say, spending. I'm not talking about the status of the customer. I'm talking about the status of the invoice record. It will be pending here. And let's say we also go ahead and set the customer to be this customer because we are creating the invoice for the this particular customer. So we're going to go ahead and set up the customer information as well. So that is going to be equals to apex customer underscore underscore C is equals to this particular customer's ID because we are creating the invoice for this customer. And then I would also like to go ahead and get the description of the field also to be set up. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the view field section and I will get the customer description of the invoice also to be set. So let's say the invoice status would be equals to trigger created the invoice. So this is what the description will get updated. So now we have created the instantiated the invoice object. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add this invoice object to the list, same like we did in the previous example. We're going to go ahead and add this to this particular invoice list, this particular invoice record to the invoice list. And once we have added all the records, that were updated to the active status, all the records, because we're, because we're assuming it's a bulk trigger, it might work on one record or it might have multiple records that it needs to update. So no matter what, we're going to go ahead and assume it's a bulk trigger. So that's why I have created a list here. And then we are going to go ahead and do this insert operation. So it should be after this one, the insert operation after the for loop, we're using the DML query to insert the invoice list. So once we have done here, let's go ahead and hit the save button. There is an issue here at line number 13, column nine, column minus one. Yeah, we have this one, it's two single quotes, hit the save button. Okay, so everything looks good here. So now we're gonna go ahead and hit the save button here. There's no error and this the status of the trigger is also active. Let me go ahead and walk you through what we have done here. So the first thing we are doing here is we are, the first thing is we created a trigger here. The name of the trigger is customer after update trigger. And then this trigger is created on this particular object. And this is an event is after update. So every time the customer record gets updated, the trigger will get fired. And then inside of the trigger, we have created an empty list to store the invoices. And then 
what we're doing is we have a for loop. This is an enhanced for loop, which will go through all the records of the customer which got updated in the context. So we're going to go ahead and look through the trigger.new is going to go ahead and look through all the records that got updated. And then we are checking the status of that particular record. And if the status of the record is active and the most important thing, and the previous status. So we're getting the old map here. We're using this context variable called trigger.oldmap. And this particular context variable is going to go ahead and fetch the previous status of that particular record. And if the previous status should not be equals to active. And if both these condition meets, then it is going to go ahead and come inside of this for if, if condition. And in the if condition, what we are doing is we are creating or instantiating an invoice record. And then we are setting up the status field to pending. The customer for which we're doing is for this is we're setting up the customer information for that invoice. And also we are setting up the description. And the description is going to be trigger created the invoice. And then once we have instantiated and we have set up the field values and everything, we're going to add that particular invoice into this list. And then we are using an, an insert query and uh, an insert query, which will go ahead and update all the records that were got updated. All the, we're going to go ahead and insert the entire invoice list. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test this example and see if it's working. So now if we go back to the customers here, and let's say there is a customer called test eight. And for this particular customer, we do not have any invoice created. So let's go ahead and edit the button here. Let's say we change the status of this field to active. So what will happen here is that, okay, since the previous status was non-active and the current status is active, in this case, it will create an invoice record. So let's go ahead and hit the save button. And if you scroll down, you will see that there is an invoice record got created for this particular customer because the previous status was non-active and the new status that it's changed to, it is active. But this time, if you go ahead and keep saving the same record again and again without making any changes, this time it should not create the invoice record because nothing changed. The previous status was also active and the new status was also active. So now if you go ahead and hit the save button, the trigger will get fired though, but the condition did not meet. So it will not create the second invoice. See if you can see here, there is no invoice created. But if you go ahead and change the status from active to let's say pending. So in this case, the, act, the previous status was active and the new status is pending. So in this case also, it's not going to create the invoice record because the condition did not meet. The condition has to be the final status the record is should be active. And the previous status should be non-active. In that case only, it will create the invoice record. So in this scenario also, it will not create the invoice record. But now if you go back and scroll down, you will see there is no invoice record got created. But the another thing is if you edit this record now, and now if you change the status from pending to active, this time it's going to go ahead and create an invoice record because the previous status in this case was pending and the new status is active. So hit the save button here. So now you will see a second invoice will also get created. So this thinks that this is probably the right way of doing the trigger. We have successfully created a trigger which creates the invoice record every time the customer status is changed to active. So let's say we wanted to make sure the customer status was inactive in the previous, in the previous state and the new state is active. So whenever the status changed from inactive to active, in that situation only, I would like to create an invoice. So the new requirement is, let's say, Right now, any time the previous if it were any time the status changes to active, no matter it's from pending status to active or paid status to active or unpaid to active or inactive to active, no matter if the previous status was non-active and the new status is active, in that case, it created an invoice record. But let's say we wanted to make sure that it only creates an invoice record whenever the previous status was inactive and the new status is active. And only in that scenario, I would like it to create an invoice record. So how will I do it? So I will go back here and change this particular trigger. And I will, I'll say that the previous trigger should equals to act inactive. So what will I do is I'm going to go ahead and edit this particular trigger here. And right now where it says that the previous status should be not active, I'm going to say if the previous status is equals to inactive. This is what I'm going to do. So if the previous status is equals to inactive and the new status is equals to active in that scenario only, I would like it to create an invoice record. So if the previous status was pending and the new status is active, 
the trigger will get fired, but the, it will not create an invoice record because it does not meet the if condition. So look at this if condition very carefully. The if condition is saying if the previous status is equals to inactive and the current status is active, in that case only the if condition, the if part will work. Otherwise, it will not. So what will happen is now if you go to the customer record and let's say you change this my tutorial rack record, Currently, it has about three invoices. And let's say the status is active. Let's say we change it to pending. Does it, will it create the invoice record in this case? No, because the previous status was active and the new status is pending. So in this case, the, the trigger will get fired, but the invoice record will not get created. So it will still be three invoice records here. Let's say we change it from pending to active status. Does in this case, the invoice record will get created? No. Because what will happen is the condition is the previous status should be inactive and the new status should be active. In that case, it will create the invoice record. So in this case also, there will be still three invoices. There will not be any new invoice record will get created. Let's go ahead and edit it one more time and see if the new status is from inactive. Let's see. In this case also, the trigger will get fired because we are updating a customer record. And but in this case, also the invoice will record will not get created because the previous status was active and the new status became inactive. So in this case, also the, the invoices records are going to be still three. There's no new new invoice record got created. But let's say if we edit this inactive to active. In this case, a new invoice record will get created because the if condition meets in this case. The previous status of the customer is inactive. That is one part of the condition. The second part of the condition was the current status should be active, which is also true. So both the condition meets. So if condition will work in this case and it will go ahead and create the fourth invoice. And you can see here it has created this fourth invoice. And if you go ahead and take a look at the fourth invoice, the description is trigger created the invoice. The status is pending and the customer name is my tutorial back. So this way, this trigger example works fine the way we expect it to be. Important point to remember is we use the trigger.old map. What does this context variable do? It's a map which will store the key as the record ID and value as the record old record values. So the trigger is working the way we expect and this is the right way of creating the trigger.